happiness is out the window What you do to me when the cold bites blue is straight So welcome back everyone, Mike here. These beautiful days just keep coming, one right after another, and I'm not complaining one bit. But today I did a little weed eating, a little bit of mowing, now I'm down here splitting some firewood, both some bulk firewood and firewood that'll be used for bundles. Here we have the uh, bulk firewood pile. And over here in the uh, firewood bucket, this wood here will be used for bundle wood. This is all red oak. I think I'm getting on to a pretty good system here. You know, I just kind of split off the wolf ridge, throw the better pieces in the uh, firewood bucket, the ones that are bark free, and the other ones that are a little more gnarly, just go up the conveyor right to the bulk firewood pile. Works out pretty well. So next thing on the agenda, I'm gonna load up some one by threes that I sawed on the wood miser sawmill. I'm gonna put them in the side by side, haul them out to the mini cabin. I'll be using those for balusters for the railing. And I'm also gonna show you a fantastic way to secure those one by three so they stay in the Ranger. So speaking of securing a load in a vehicle for transportation, I got a great story for you. My father, he was an auctioneer. Now sometimes he'd you know, have an auction at somebody's house. Other times he'd buy whole housefuls of furniture, you know, an entire estate, and would haul all that furniture to another location. And I can't really remember, but I think when I was about 10 years old, it's probably when I started helping at the auctions, I can't remember for sure, but when I got to be 16, sometimes I would drive the truck as well. Now my dad, he was an expert when it came to fitting the most amount of furniture in a truck and actually keeping it in that truck. And there were no bungee cords or ratchet straps. It was all with rope and strings. Well, one time we had a couple loads. You know, my dad was driving one truck, me and my buddy were in another one. 
and we, I had this Ford, I think it was a half ton, eight foot bed on it, and my dad had these wood sideboards on it. Well, we had it just packed full of stuff, but right down the center of it, there's kind of a little bit of an opening. You know, we had all the tall stuff on the sides, and in the middle of that load, we had this round, it was like an end table, an antique, real nice, all kind of, you know, intricate de detail, beautiful little table sitting right in the middle of that load. Well, I'm driving down the road about 50, 60 mile an hour, you know, and everything's going great. And we're on our way home to the old barn where we're going to unload everything. And I just catch something out of the rear view mirror. And that little table, it just was like levitating. The wind got underneath of it and it just lifted up. And it got up about this high, you know, almost to cab level. I'm like, uh-oh. I just started to slow down a little bit. And that thing went up above the cab and whew, it was gone, you know. And I saw it in the mirror and it just exploded all over the road. Luckily, nobody was behind us, you know. I'm like, oh man, he's gonna be he's gonna be pretty upset, right? So on the way back, I'm thinking to myself, what am I gonna tell him? How am I gonna explain this? And I'm thinking for that perfect time to say something. And we pull into the old barn, my dad walks around the truck, and I mean, he just instantly, where's that little table at? I mean, he knew it was missing like that. And so uh, I got a lesson there on how to better secure a load. So these are the one by threes that I'm going to haul out to the mini cabin. These are red pine. Now normally with this longer stuff, what I do, I slide it through the back of the Ranger here and it works fairly well for hauling long material, but you really have to hold on to it because when you're out there on the trails, you have to be careful. It doesn't, you know, A, slide out the back, but even worse, go through the windshield in the front. So normally what I do when I'm hauling lumber like this, I just try to hold on to it as tight as I can and I go real slow. But as you can see, they're just kind of sitting here. They can go all over the place. And my biggest risk, like I said, is sliding through the windshield. Now check this out. Simple strap. Now, full disclosure, Simple Strap sent these to us to try out and see how we like them. And so far, I like what I see. It says here on them, they are the original all-purpose rubber tie-down. Simply the fastest and easiest way to secure pretty much anything. Well, these 1x3s, they fit into the category of pretty much anything. They have the uh, regular duty ones. These are 2 millimeters thick by 40 millimeters wide, 20 feet long. And they have the heavy duty ones. They are three millimeters thick by 40 millimeters wide, 20 feet long. These are self gripping, so you don't need knots, you don't need hooks, rusty ratchets, for example, that rusty ratchet right there, uh, or buckles. These would be ideal to uh, keep in your truck for construction, home improvement stuff. I could see using these for like uh, glue ups for holding something, you know, almost in a clamping application. Uh, storm prep, recreation, and obviously securing loads when you're hauling things. So obviously these are uh, reusable and you can cut them to length. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to secure these 1x3s in the back of the Ranger. Then I'm going to head up to the house. I'll leave them sit there for a while while I have some dinner. And then we're going to head out to the mini cabin. And when we do, we're going to drive about five times faster than I normally would and see if this stays in place. So what I'm going to do is cut this uh, 20 footer probably into, I don't know, three pieces, maybe six feet long, six or seven feet long, something like that. Cuts fairly easy. You can see it's stretchy. All you do when you wrap it, make sure your first wrap and your second wrap are in contact with one another like so. I'm going to go under this support here.
and then you just tuck the last one under your last wrap. Like so. Huh, it's pretty slick. All right, I cut another six footer, approximately. And you know what? These uh, one by threes are very dusty. They got sawdust all over them. I'm not putting this one as tight as I did the last one. I don't think you really need to. That is pretty slick. Look at that. Boom. So it would be best if I had something in the very back of the Ranger to secure them because I have a lot of wood sticking out the back. But so far, so good. Like I said, I'm going to head up to the house right now. We'll leave them sit for a little bit. I don't think they're going to loosen or anything. We won't touch them. After dinner, we'll head out to the mini cabin and we'll drive kind of fast and uh, see how secure it stays. I just had dinner straps are still very tight we're gonna head out to the mini cabin kind of quick and see how well this uh, stays in place worked perfectly and then all you have to do to release it just pull up on this pull that out and that's it it worked really well I'm impressed I hope to get back out here this week and get this finished up. I only need maybe four or five more hours. I need to put the uh, trim on the corners, finish the uh, railing and the balusters down the steps, and then I'll wait till that dries a little bit more. Uh, that's that red pine. That was sawed probably, I don't know, a month ago. I'll wait till it dries some more and bring that Graco sprayer out and stain it. I got a little bit more staining to do underneath of it. But uh, in the door, can't forget the door. I made the door. It's in the garage right now. But yeah, I need about four or five hours, and I think I can get this wrapped up. Maybe in an evening or two this week, I can get to work on this. It's really nice being able to uh, saw your own lumber, though. It is. And actually, it's straighter. It's not cupped. It's not twisted. Uh, works out really well. Now, as far as the uh, simple strap goes... I love it. I do. You're going to see me using these a lot more. Uh, I think they're really handy. Now, are these going to replace all your ratchet straps? No, they're not. You know, you need ratchet straps for, you know, big spans. If you're strapping in big pieces of furniture or attachments on your trailer or something like that, these aren't going to replace that. But I can think of hundreds of uses for these things, especially like when you're working by yourself. When I was building this cabin, I use a lot of clamps. You know, you're putting up one board over here and you got to get over to this end and get it leveled up you could use these i mean you could use them for making repairs uh you know gluing up things uh like i said ladder racks hauling stuff on your side by side there's just tons of things you can use these for and they're really easy they really are they work really well 
I'll put a link down in the description if you want to learn more about these things. And as a matter of fact, when they sent these to me, they asked me if I would do a 20 second, you know, just mention them, talk about them for 20 seconds. Well, I basically did an entire video on them uh, just because I like them that much. I did. I think it's a great idea and will make life easier. I do. Yeah, that is slick. That really is. They work off of not only tension, you know, like a ratchet strap, you're pulling it real tight, but also friction. That's the neat part about it, how you just wrap it right over itself and it's tight. Yeah, simple strap. But check out that link if you're interested. If not, don't worry about it. But uh, like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Thanks.